In this video, we'll be checking out potential questions that can be asked from the diagram down here. So the diagram below represents the skulls of a chimpanzee, an australopithecine and a human. Now before you go and answer or look at any of the questions that they are asking, just go and take your pencil and try and identify the three skulls down here because they haven't told you which ones are which. So we'll start off with the most obvious one which is C and that is a human skull. Then the, between A and B there's a few things that you can look at to tell you which ones are which. So first is this brow ridge that we can see on A and we can see that it is smaller or less pronounced in B. Another thing is the very big jaw. Um, it's much uh, bigger than it is in B and another thing are the canines that we can see in A that is not in B. So just based off of those few things, I can see that A is that of a chimp. It doesn't necessarily have to be a chimp. A gorilla skull will look very similar. Just read your question and see what they are referring to. And then that will make B the australopithecine. Uh, so another thing that you can check out is look out for any labels that they might ask you. So why is pointing to the canine over there? They can ask you why it is so big. And then X is pointing to these black dots on A and B. So they might ask you to compare the foramen magnum position because that is what those black dots are. So that is where the spinal cord enters the skull so they can ask you to refer to that so we've now identified the three skulls let's for example look at a potential question so they can ask you to for example compare a and c they can ask you to compare the teeth because there's a major difference between these two uh, these two skulls teeth so starting off with a Remember, a chimpanzee is, that a, is, a, is an African ape and a gorilla will also fall into that cl uh, classification. And then we've got the human. So African apes or the chimp, what do we see there? We can see that they've got very big canines. You can see it also there. So they have very large canines. And then if you can see where the arrow is pointing to there, they've got spaces between their teeth large spaces between their teeth called the diastema and then if they ask you they can also ask you about the jaw shape so in chimps they've got a u-shaped jaw whereas in humans they've got a round jaw now looking at the human teeth so humans have much smaller canines we also have um, much smaller jaws and then we have no spaces between our teeth so we don't have that diastema and that is absent. Now, why is there such a big difference between A and C? And that would be because of diet. So humans with the increase in their cranium size, so their brain size, we discovered fire. And because we discovered fire, we could cook our food, which made digestion of the food so much easier. We didn't have to have these big jaws and teeth to grind down the food. The cooking process already started to break down the food for us. Now obviously chimps and gorillas, they don't have that luxury. So they need these big massive canines and molars uh, to grind the teeth down and tear, tear food off of whatever they are eating. Now chimps and gorillas, they do have a plant based diet majority plant based diet but they will sometimes eat a little bit of protein so their canines can be used for uh, for example tearing off bark off of twigs and so on that they are eating it can also be used for display purposes amongst the males to try and attract females or males trying to show off um, and show that they are bigger and better than the other males around and it can be also used uh, for defending themselves against other gorillas invading their territory or um, predators coming into the area. So those are some answers to why the teeth are so different. Next, they can also once again ask you to compare the skulls between A and C. And this is generally done 
uh, by tabulating the differences. So when you see the word tabulate, it means that the, the examiner wants you to draw a table. It doesn't have to be fancy, it can be a cross shape like this. And then just remember to say what you are comparing. So you are comparing a chimp skull to a human skull and they can then ask you to uh, tabulate the differences that you can see from the diagram or that is visible from the diagram. So starting with the chimp skull, uh, let's start with this big jaw. So chimps have got a large protruding jaw and humans obviously don't that don't have that so we've got smaller jaws that are not protruding and because we've got these smaller jaws um, can you see that the slope of the face so we can start there so vertical slope to the face the slope of the face whereas with the chimps because they've got these big massive jaws you can see that they have a sloping face. Uh, humans have a very big chin, whereas chimps don't have such a big chin. Next, we can look at the brow ridges. So in chimps, they've got prominent, prominent brow ridges. I really do hope you guys know what the word prominent means. It's mean, it means it's very visible. And then humans have reduced or absent brow ridges. Another uh, ridge that is visible here is over here on the top and that is the cranial ridge. So once again chimps have prominent cranial ridges and what the cranial ridge is used for is it serves as a muscle attachment point specifically for the jaw muscles because they've got these big massive jaws they need big muscles to move those jaws around. And then humans obviously have uh, no cranial ridge. Let's see what else we can say uh, while we're on the brain. So humans have a large cranium and chimps have a smaller cranium. Just to give you an idea of the biggest of the big size difference between the two, average human brain size is about a thousand three hundred and fifty two grams if I, if I recall correctly, whereas a chimp's brain, the average brain is only around three hundred and eighty four grams. I think that's what the human baby's brain actually weighs if I, if I also recall correctly. So just so you can see the difference in the brain size and I've got a diagram down here just to show you the cranial uh, ridge down there. You can see how big that is. So once again serves as a muscle attachment point for the jaws. You can also see the big brow ridges, the large canines and then obviously the spaces, the diastema between the teeth. Another thing that they can ask you here, there's multiple questions that they can ask you, um, is that all three of these skulls have got forward facing eyes. We can see I've scratched so much on this diagram now. So what do we call forward facing eyes? We call that binocular vision or stereo, stereo, sorry, scopic vision. So what does that, that is 3D vision, what does it help us do? It, enable, it enables us to have a depth of field, to be able to see how far things are away from us, us to judge distance. And this specifically also comes in with predators. You see this in lions, leopards and hyenas because they need to be able to judge how far their prey is from them. So this just helps us that we don't have any blind spots. So it's very accurate vision to have. Uh, whereas with using a zebra, for example, they actually have to turn their heads because their eyes are on the sides of their heads. So they need to turn their heads if they need to see something in front of them because that's a blind spot uh, because their eyes are on the sides. So that's another reason. And then once again, the foramen magnum position humans are upright walkers so the foramen magnum will come into the central part of the skull 
uh, so that we have we are balanced australopithecines were also upright walkers so the the foramen magnum position was not as central uh, in the skull as it is in humans but it is also not as far back as it is in chimps and the reason for that is because they are quadrupeds so that means that they walk on all four of their legs so the spine will come in from the back and remember chimps and gorillas have a c-curved spine whereas humans have that s-curved spine that helps with balance um, and shock absorption i really do hope this video helped you guys understand this topic a bit better remember to like and subscribe to stay up to date with any new videos that are posted and if you have any questions uh, from previous exam papers if you can tell me what question from what exam paper or send me a picture of your questions that you want to ask you can send that to miss van deventer's biology class at gmail.com and i'll try and get back to you